Hi, in this tutorial, I'll discuss how to prepare and use photogrammetry generated meshes, such as branches, inside a SpeedTree modeler. I'll start this video by demonstrating how to prepare a scanned mesh for mesh on mesh placement. In some cases, your mesh may just need a new axis point or need points applied for other imported branches and leaves to stem from. I already have my material and photogrammetry scan loaded and the mesh assigned to the material. So next, I'll just place my scanned mesh into the scene by right-clicking in the Generation Editor, select the Mesh Generator, and assign it under the Mesh Group. You want to make sure to position the base of the mesh on the scene's origin point and orient it so it's pointing down the y-axis. This way, it will be oriented correctly when you import the prep model into the scene you're modeling in. Now I'm going to add my anchor points. The idea behind 3D anchor points is that you are basically marking where a mesh, in this case branches, may grow. So I'll right click in the Generation Editor and select the Place 3D Anchors template, which will create a target in the Leaf Mesh Generator. The target generator sets the location for the children, while the Leaf Mesh Generator is there to help the user visualize the placement and orientation. To add anchor points, you just have to hold down the spacebar and click on the spot you want it to be placed. It's important to remember as you place your anchor points that they will automatically be oriented to face towards the viewport camera, which you'll notice as I continue to add the rest of my points. Okay. Now that is done, I'll explain some of the properties found in the target generator. By default, the target style is set to laser and is what I just used to place my anchors. Typically, you'll either use the laser style or closest point. The laser style is basically shooting a laser from the target to the parent. The advantage of using this style is that the children of the target won't move a lot, even if the parent mesh changes some. While the closest point style uses the closest point on the parent mesh to the target icon. As for the other options, manual allows you to just put the target where you want it and rotate it around with the regular gizmo. It will still weld but won't move at all if the mesh changes. Lastly, target locked lets you get a target on the parent, lock it, and then move that target around to control where it points. Now the next group, Point, allows the user to control which axis to point down and the location to point it towards, while a line sets which axis to use and what to align it with. This can get pretty confusing, which is why the helpers are useful to have in this scene. With them, you can see how your mesh will be oriented and where they will be pointing. Here, I have an example scene already set up that demonstrates why these controls are important. You'll notice that everything is working as expected when I move the start angle property. Now if I switch this mesh out with another prep scan with the line axis set to Y instead of Z, you'll notice that the children branches are now behaving wrong as I change the start angle. Once everything is set up and you're ready to export, go to File, Export Mesh, and set the save as type to SpeedTree Raw XML and hit save. In the export settings, you'll want to make sure the group by is set to material, that the leaf references is enabled, and that skip texture save is checked. There is no need to re-export the textures. Once that's done, you'll import the prepped mesh just like any other mesh by loading the XML file in the Meshes tab and assigning that mesh to the correct material. To build a mesh -on mesh model, I'll start off by adding a mesh generator and assign the prepped branch material to it. 
Next, I'll scale it down. Position the mesh to the origin point and rotate it on the X axis so the mesh is upright. I want to be able to deform the scan mesh and in order to do that, I need to create spines for the mesh to follow. I first need to add a branch generator, go to the skin group and set the type to spine only. Branches will only be created in the spots we marked with the 3D anchors. Then I'll add a mesh generator as a child of the branch generator. This will assign the spines to the scanned meshes. Just going to make some quick edits. Once that is all set up, you'll notice that there seems to be some areas not showing near the weld on the prepped mesh scans, and that there are red rings on those same branches. This is because the weld has failed. You can choose to either keep all the meshes and fix the welds, or remove any failed welds by disabling the Keep Property checkbox. Here are some reasons welding can fail. One reason can be that the mesh's width is just too big. There are two ways the width can be edited. In the spine-only generator, the length and width of the mesh are tied together. So if I make the spine length property shorter, it will also get thinner. I can also just make the radius smaller by going to the mesh generator and reduce the deformation radius scale value. Another cause can be the weld distance. You can adjust this property in order to get most of the branches welded. You may have to also edit the green curve to increase or decrease the welding distance on certain sections of the model. Finally, another cause could be the start angle property. As you can see, there may be times you just can't get all the branches welded. In that case, you can node edit them until they do. So I'm just going to fiddle with that. Okay, now that is done, I'll quickly demonstrate why it's important to have a spine for your mesh. With this setup, many of the branch generator's properties can be used on the meshes, such as spine length, orientation, gravity, and noise. It is from this point you can choose to either build the majority of your model with scan components or switch to speed tree procedural modeling. Just like with this model right here, which is modeled by mostly using scanned meshes, and then at the upper twig levels, I switch to speed tree generated branches and leaves. Well, that is it for this video, and thank you for watching.